Hello, yes? Uh, I'm looking to book a cab to the airport. Yeah, right around Halloween. Nighttime? Sure, nighttime works for me. It's a late flight. Uh, you've got someone? Well, just to make sure, I need someone who is brusque, a little bit boorish, but ultimately very charming. Maybe with a classic New York personality and a blue-collar scruffiness that will endear him to Midwest American audiences. Uh, oh, and if he also turns out to be a bona fide comedy genius, that would really help. Really? Has he ever played Dracula by any chance? Well, he sounds perfect. Judd Seymour Hirsch was born in 1935 in the Bronx. He was the child of a German-Jewish father who worked as an electrician and a Russian-Jewish mother. He was one of two brothers. With family in Brooklyn, Judd Hirsch grew up between the two boroughs. He attended DeWitt Clinton High School, an all-boys school, in 1952, and earned a degree in physics from City College of New York. Shortly out of college, Hirsch served a term in the U.S. Army before returning to civilian life with a job as an engineer for the Westinghouse Electric Corporation. By many accounts, Hirsch didn't have much interest in acting until he reached his late 20s and didn't really pursue it as a career until his 30s. He studied acting at the HB studio in Greenwich Village, as well as graduating from the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in 1962. He launched his acting career in 1963, playing the telephone man in Neil Simon's Barefoot in the Park in its Broadway premiere. But his next professional role wouldn't be until 1971, with an uncredited role in Jump. And in 1973, he returned to the professional stage in the Obie Award-winning off-Broadway production of Lanford Wilson's The Hot L. Baltimore. In 1974, Hirsch began appearing on television in made-for-TV movies and a string of guest appearances in series like Medical Story, Rhoda, and Del Vecchio. In 1978, he took one of his most popular roles as Alex Rieger in Taxi, appearing in 114 episodes and winning two primetime Emmys. He is one of only a few actors to star in multiple series for Paramount Television, following up Taxi with the critically acclaimed Dear John, a co-starring role with Bob Newhart in George and Leo, and a core ensemble role in Numbers. In his stage career, he has been awarded the Tony for Best Actor twice, once for the 1985 production of I'm Not Rappaport, and once for the 1992 production of Conversations with My Father. He continues to work regularly in film and television, with appearances in Uncut Gems, The Muppets, Tower Heist, The Goldbergs, Law & Order SVU, Sharknado 2, really just take your pick. Judd Hirsch is arguably one of the great American actors of the late 20th and early 21st century. Oh boy! Oh master! Oh master! I forgot to open the window. Forgive me! It will never happen again! And I know how to make sure it never happens again. <laughs> In 1979, Coleman Jacoby, a former writer for Sid Caesar's Your Show of Shows and The Phil Silvers Show, teamed up with experienced script supervisor Liz Argo and director Bruce Bilson, who had previously directed episodes of Get Smart, Hawaii Five-0, and Barney Miller. Together, they created The Halloween That Almost Wasn't, for the ABC network. This is one of those fun oddities of American TV where nobody involved seems to have expected it to exist quite this long. Shot on a shoestring budget, it's a child-friendly, holiday-themed comedy stuffed with popular TV stars of the time. Brought to you by the toy brand Kenner, this special not only starred Hirsch, but also frequent TV guest star Mariette Hartley, 
Laugh-In alum and Wonder Woman arch-villain Henry Gibson, Bob Newhart Show regular Jack Riley, and Macmillan and Wife regular John Shuck. This sort of thing used to get full-page ads in TV Guide. And this is what that ad would look like. The 30-minute program, 25, after you remove the commercials, is light on plot because it may be a television movie, but it needs to be wrapped up satisfactorily in the time allotted to your typical sitcom. Judd Hirsch plays Dracula, the king of Halloween, who is concerned by reports on the news that Halloween may not happen this year. He calls together the other monsters, a team definitely inspired by, but legally distinct from, the Universal Monsters. After learning that the witch who flies across the moon, totally a thing, you guys, there are tons of clip art for it after all, is refusing to participate in Halloween. This leads to every child's favorite plot point. Contract negotiations. It's one of those days I wish I was dead. And stay dead. It's almost midnight. I will have to meet her conditions. But I will never forgive her for this. For the under 30 minutes runtime and made-for-TV holiday special origins, Hirsch absolutely sinks his teeth into the material. All of the cheesy, cheesy, vaudeville-inspired material. You also get to see Dracula do some disco dancing, which was neither the first nor the last time that Dracula would be disco-fied. All in all, it's a Dracula caricature, but it's a well-done caricature for kids, and it takes a lot of commitment to pull off that kind of thing. Everyone involved probably expected the special to run on Halloween for one, maybe two years tops. But after its 1979 debut, it aired every year well into the 90s as part of the Disney's Halloween Treat and Disney Halloween Blocks. If you want to watch it today, that's rough, man. That's, that's really rough. It hasn't had an official release since the days of VHS, where it went under the title The Night Dracula Saved the World. But if you like your classic cheese served with comedy riffing, it's available to buy from the folks over at Riff Tracks. Kind of a fun note, the Frankenstein's monster in The Halloween That Almost Wasn't is played by John Shuck, who, as I mentioned, was fresh off of Macmillan and Wife at the time. And his look is very clearly based off of the Universal Monsters design. Starting nine years later in October of 1988, Shuck would put on some very similar makeup to play Herman Munster in The Munsters Today. That sequel to the original sitcom would go on to run for three seasons and 73 episodes in first-run syndication with the role of Grandpa Vladimir Dracula, played by Howard Morton of Gimme a Break. So what do you think about Judd Hirsch's Dracula? It's largely a comedy imitation of Bela Lugosi, but I think it's a lot of fun. I think that... Among modern actors, Judd Hirsch really has the chops to deliver that old-school vaudeville patter. Did you see this special when it first aired? Have you caught it at any of the times that it was aired all through the 90s? Maybe you caught it recently from Rift Tracks. I believe it was their Halloween special last year. Now is a great time to find out that I wasn't recording. Ha-ha! <laughs> I was recording. Fooled myself. Ha-ha-ha! <laughs> Drop down in the comments and let me know what you think of this special. And while you're down there, there's a like and subscribe button. There's a little bell you can ring, which will instantly give you updates every time there's a new video on the film Optimist. I hope to have a lot of great conversations about movies here. And of course, if you'd like to help out the channel financially, we do have a link in the description where you can go check out our coffee account. Pitch us a few bucks, help buy us coffee. Give us the energy we need to keep these movies coming. Until next time, I am Glenn Williams, the film optimist, and remember to watch like it means something.